Show me pinta fence. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. Other side. Look, I always look, I. All right. Welcome to another edition of JTJU, where we all try to be just a little better at the game of Clash of Clans. I got another episode or snippet from our war with BRCM, where they sent us home crying like children. In this case, we're looking at Zombies KHC Quattro Lava Loon. Rounding out all of our stud videos from this war, we've touched on each flavor, our three flavors of Lava Loon, and how Town Hall 10s can be three-starred, enabling a waterfall of power to your clan. So let's get to it and take a look at how Zombie pulls it off. All right, so here is snippet number three from the war with BRCM. Here's the base we're going to take a look at. I'll pause it again. Uh, it's a Town Hall 10 entry, like the others. Again, it's going to be a three star. Uh, and this time it's going to actually be a KHC, no golem, so no number after it, Quattro Lava Loon. Now, uh, the big things that we're going to be seeing here is I guess I'd point out before we start is interesting that the kings, you can't see it, but the king is level 20. And the queen is level 26. Now, at Town Hall 10, you typically will not see three star footage for royals that are below level 20. There, it's very rare. Uh, most of the time, you're seeing it above that. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is as you shift into Town Hall 10, the spells that are being deployed with Lava Loon support uh, in, in three star scenarios is. Consistently, you are seeing freezes, sometimes one, but usually two. And then the rages themselves are still present. Uh, interesting here, there's no lightning, because usually the lightning is present. And that's usually when you have the KHC1 or KHC2, where you know the KHC team's driving in, engaging the CC in the walls, uh, not as part, not with the hounds that have that support. So when the hounds and the hound pups are the ones that are responsible for the CC, you'll see no lightning, and it'll be more rage. But uh, so that's what you can then know kind of what the attack's going to be, because if there's no lightning, odds are we're not driving in. We're just going to deal with it. So let's go ahead and play. Turn this puppy back on. Light the fire. See what happens. Here comes the exciting KHC. Scraping action. So there's a king getting pummeled by three different things at the same time. Doing pretty well, considering that. And the queen gets into a cat fight. Level 26 versus level 11. The smaller cat loses. And she is passed out in by the wall. So that gets that done. And now you can kind of see, I guess we pause again here. You can see that we've got the 4 AD still up. So it kind of also shows you one of the rules that changes as you move to Town Hall 10, and that's the rule or guideline that I mentioned in the prior video. When we analyze that 20-plus Lava Loon attacks uh, that we have on footage, you know, the, the key theme was at Town Hall 9, you're always seeing hounds exceeding number of ADs left after the KHC phase. And at Town Hall 10, though, it's more 60-40, 50-50, depending on the situation. This would be a situation where we're still going to end up getting the three, but we have to fight through all four to do it. So you can't really base your Town Hall 10 mix on how many ADs will be left after the KHC, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's keep going. Let's fire up the pen here. All right. There's a pause as he reflects on the magnificence of what he's going to do. So there's the beginning of the attack, and it's not very, there, there is an interesting thing there for people that are struggling with speed of deployment um, that Zombie 66 does. Now, a lot of people are using one or two fingers, and they're going tap, 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 like this, right? I'm one of them. Uh, and that works. I mean, it's not bad. But what he's actually doing, if you watch the pattern of his deployment, is I think he's got two hands on each side of the iPad. And he's tapping them all at once, bing, 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 or maybe like in a kind of a, you know, if you ever like strum your fingers on the table, I think it's more of that. Here, let's go back a little bit and you can see it again. Let's see how good I am at backing up film footage. Not that good. Oh, I'm getting closer. 
there it is, right there. Brrr. Brrr. See, it's just like when you strum your fingers on a table. One more time. <laughs> so, not only, and you can do the sound effects as you do it. I think that'll help. But so he's kind of just tapping one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and is it Pinky's involved? You know, the Pinky likes to get involved in Clash of Clans. You know, a lot of times it's a four finger, but the Pinky's jealous and it would like to participate. So if you can do that, I think your hand happiness overall will be a lot higher. Um, so. We're now in the position of where you can see that got a nice clean deployment. It's not as, as fancy as the spot deploys where you're actually pointing and picking, but it does accomplish the same goal when you've got a flat surface, right? Because by having that line of balloons, you kind of know they're going to go in, and just by math, you know, they're going to pick the path and end up on the buildings you want with some sense of grouping, right? Not everybody on the same thing. So that's why it works. If you didn't have, if you had an irregular surface, I wouldn't do that. Because uh, you can get into trouble because then the, the math of where they go changes um, more com complicated than the simple strumming of your fingers of what you want it to do. So let's resume again. But that was a little fun side path there. Here we go. Hogs or hounds are flying. Okay, so here we're going to come in. Now the rages are going to drop on both sides to enable the pups that fly out to assist them killing off the CC. And they'll do a fine job of that. Uh, you'll notice now we're we're actually deploying the freezes, which are usually used to, of course, lock down the eye towers. Now, there's an interesting part. I don't know if you caught that coming in from the backside. Um, consistently, you'll see that if you do have an even situation of hounds to ADs, right, you're going to watch the flow of your troops. So in this case here, Notice we've got a little bit of a lead going on to this over here, right? And this guy's more trailing. So the one that's going to need assistance of the two ADs sides is going to be this guy. This guy is going to need more help. So you drop, because you could have dropped on either side to come in with the snipe group. Um, let's make it hot pink. But you could have come in from the side of either one. And, and then come in to assist, but he came from the side where they were getting lag because of timing. The other thing that was interesting to watch is you can't see it anymore, but he came from over here. And look at the angle that actually, that and that's intentional. That was pre-thought out, right? Because he knew that if he came in, if you look at the center of this and draw a line, right, to where the loon could post up and then move, if he's on this side of the AD, it's going to go to the expo and not really help him with his core concern, which is getting the AD down. But if he comes in anywhere for on this side where he can get to this, you know, any defensive unit is a nine tile building. So if he can get in this outer corner tile, then the distance he's going to get is going to be right to that expo, right? That totally is not very good. Let's just go with white to the expo, right? So it's a lot, it's a very interesting understanding of the pathing required to get where you want the loons to be to get there quickly, because that's the big concern with lava loon. And so nicely done to understand that hey, I'm going to watch after my two ads that I start the attack against drop. Where's my attack flowing? Where's the gap going to be where I have the hounds way in front of my loons, and I'm going to bring in the back. What's my back? What, have a plan of where I'm going to drop to support that spot. With a rage, it was what he did. Bang. Drop the CC, drop the rage. Those units swam right in to help. So let's clear that off. And then we can continue on without the pink lines. And look at that. Bang. Still, And look at those nice little snowflakes flying by from the town hall. I never even noticed that till today. I tell you, you get all kinds of value out of Clash of Clans these days. Snow and free spells. But at this point, the war is, I mean, you, you can tell just at a glance. Anytime you've got the loons way in front, a good load of pups that are back in the backside still popping away, you're going to win. I mean, it's not, there's no, there's no mystery involved at this point. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if you look at this, oh, wow, I picked up, I picked up the speed. I was going to say, man, this guy's, he's taking drugs to his, his uh, loons. <laughs> but anyway, good attack by Zombie 66.
All right, so give me some love out on the forums or on YouTube if you got time on your hands. Maybe subscribe to the channel, God forbid. Otherwise, if you got extra time, feel free to click on the white dot of power in the upper right. It'll show you cards to the things you're seeing on the screen here or some other stuff maybe that's just kind of serendipity for you to fire up your day. Worst case, I, as always, I wish you good luck in your upcoming wars, and I will talk to you soon. Mr. Miyagi, now show us how to paint the fence. Show me paint the fence. Hey! Hey! Yes! Yes!